Hello chess lovers, so right here and in this video I would like to share with you a fantastic game from 1954 about Phoenix Mislov World Championship match. This game was played in round 9 and the challenger Vasilis Mislov had white pieces while the reigning world chess champion Mikhail Botvinnik was on the black side. Let's see what happened on the board. Smyslov opened up with e4 and Botvinnik responded with e6. He goes for French defense, d4, d5, knight c3, bishop b4. We have the winover variation, e5, c5, a3. In here the main move is bishop takes c3, but in our game we have bishop a5. Botvinnik is choosing the retreat variation, against which Smyslov went for a very aggressive b4 move. This is a well-known pawn sacrifice pointed out by Elekine in the New York 1924 tournament book. c takes d4 was played, Botvinnik is choosing the Armenian variation. Another alternative is playing c takes b4 to which white is responding with knight b5 but in our game we have c takes d4 and we have queen g4 white is instantly trying to exploit the absence of dark squared bishop and is targeting the pawn on g7 knight e7 with his last move botvinnik is allowing white to munch his king side pawns King f8 could have been a very solid alternative, but in our game we have an aggressive looking knight e7 move. Here we have b takes a5, d takes c3 and queen takes g7. Rook g8, queen takes h7 and knight d7. A bit passive square for the queen side knight. Instead of knight d7, it was better to play knight c6. This is what Mikhail Tal played against Bobby Fischer in 1960 at Leipzig Olympiad. Finally the game ended up in a draw, but in our game after queen takes h7 we have knight d7, knight f3 and another strange move knight f8. Playing queen c7 could have been better if queen h5 then queen takes a5. The queen on h5 is placed awkwardly and is blocking the h pawn's path, but in our game after knight f3 we have knight f8. Here Smyslov moved back his queen on d3, queen takes a5 and there it goes h4. Yes, white wants to make use of this passed pawn on h file. Bishop d7 was played and this time we have bishop g5. Here is how Smyslov commands his move. The bishop takes up a highly advantageous position. It not only prevents castling, but also completely dominates the weakened dark squares. Now both kings remain in the center, but white's advantage is undisputed. The most important factor is the possibility of advancing the edge pawn. Although I have to tell you that going for h5 straight away was also playable if knight f5 then h6. But in our game Smyslov played bishop g5 and after rook c8 we have knight d4. But Vinnik called this move very subtle and strongly played. And here is how Smyslov commands his move. This centralization of the knight simultaneously eliminates the threat of rook c4, rook e4. To knight d4, Botvinnik responded with knight f5 and we have rook b1, white is targeting the pawn on b7, after which instead of playing b6, which is in the opinion of both players was the best move, Botvinnik played rook c4, which is a terrible mistake. Smyslov called this a fatal idea since Belek's counterplay encounters an elegant refutation. Here we have knight takes f5 and after e takes f5 Smyslov simply munched the pawn on b7. Here Botvinnik played rook e4 check and instead of covering his king, which is also a strong move, in here Smyslov simply captured on e4. Look at this epic move! About this move Smyslov writes, this queen sacrifice decides the outcome of this brief but stormy battle. The black king finds itself in a mating net. By the way, it turns out that when playing rook e4 check, Botvinnik had completely forgot about rook b8 threat. And actually, instead of playing rook e4 check, 
He was planning first to capture on g5 and only then go for rook e4 check, but even in this case after bishop e2, yes white is winning if bishop c6 then rook b3 and if move like d4 then f3, if rook takes e5 then queen takes d4, yes again this should be winning for white. In our game after rook e4 check we have queen takes e4 and after d takes e4 we have rook b8 check bishop c8 and now comes bishop b5 check and black is forced to give back his queen otherwise if move like knight d7 then black king will get checkmated in our game after bishop b5 check we have queen takes b5 rook takes b5 knight e6 bishop f6 white is saving his bishop which is now controlling the h8 square and the h pawn is unstoppable here both Fini captured on g2, but after h5, bishop a6, h6, he resigned. Yes, if you capture the rook, then this h pawn is unstoppable. That's why after h6, we have a resignation. A very beautiful game, I think, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end, a beautiful chess puzzle for you. Take a look at this position, please, and try to find the winning move for black. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. For more games, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, press the bell button to get notified about new uploads. I will see you in my next video. Take care.